The stock market has been pretty chaotic lately. Large swings in the market, uncertainty with what the Federal Reserve is going to do with respect to interest rates, and war in the Middle East, just to name a few issues. Long-term investors should generally not be worried, though, even if the markets can be turbulent in the short term. However, what about money you need in the next three to six months? Money in an emergency fund? Money you might need in one to two years? What are your options? Let's talk about five different ways to handle this money and the pros and cons of each strategy. Option number one, just keep on investing, baby. So for long-term investors, this is always the best strategy. If there's money you do not need any time in the near future, such as your retirement funds or maybe long-term savings goals, then this money should be invested long-term. Short-term fluctuations in the market do not matter. This allows you to keep pace with and beat inflation so that you can retire one day. Now, this happens to be a terrible plan, though, for money you need in the semi-near future. According to Murphy's Law, you'd likely find yourself in a situation where you need that money right away and at the worst possible market timing. For time periods of one to three years, there's a very real risk that the market can experience a drop and you are faced with the decision to sell your investments because you need the money now. It's for this reason that staying fully invested in the stock market with short-term savings is not recommended unless you have other resources available that you can tap into if needed. Option number two here you may think is a joke, but people do actually implement this strategy, so we need to talk about it. And that is just sticking your money under the mattress. Now, your money is definitely safe, I guess, to the extent that you do not fear a break into your home, but that's about the only possible benefit other than having immediate access to the funds if you need it. The reality is if you're just holding a bunch of cash, hoarding it in your home for the long term, inflation is destroying this money. You don't see it happening, of course, because the hundreds or thousands of dollars do not become less valuable to your eyes, but it buys less and less over time. Aside from money needed for a potential zombie apocalypse, it would be best to at least stick with the next option, which is option number three, keeping your money in a normal or traditional bank account account. Now, I do think that this is the strategy that most investors utilize for their emergency fund, for short-term savings. Now, there are some benefits utilizing this strategy. Number one, your money is safe. It's in a bank account. Nobody's going to find money underneath your mattress. It's safe in that respect. And secondly, the additional benefit is it is insured with FDIC insurance up to $250,000. So even if the poop hits the fan and there is a run on the bank and the markets are out of control, your account is insured up to $250,000. Unfortunately, having your money in a bank account is only a bit better than having the money under your mattress due to inflation and the fact that most traditional bank accounts pay fractions of pennies on the dollar. Now, this brings us to option number four, which is to utilize a high yield savings account. Now, this is likely the very best strategy for the average Joe investor out there. Given the current monetary policy and current inflation rates, there are some banks out there paying significant interest rates in their high yield savings accounts. This is so much better than a standard checking or savings account because in addition to the safety and the insurance, you have a tool to fight inflation. You can get yields of approximately 5% right now, which comes close to matching inflation rates we are experiencing. Now, the problem to this strategy, though, is you're not growing your money compared to inflation. You're just holding steady. For money you do not need in the next couple of years, this is not a great strategy, but it's a perfect strategy for an emergency fund or other short-term savings accounts. In my opinion, everybody needs to be utilizing a high-yield savings account for their emergency fund or short term goals like a wedding, vacation, or new car purchase. But which high yield savings account should you use? Let me introduce you to Laurel Road, which has a high yield savings account you can open right now with a 5% annual percentage yield, also known as APY. Their high yield savings account has zero, that's right, zero maintenance fees, and you can get started today because there are no minimum account balances. Even if the stock market falls apart, you can have peace of mind knowing that your money is insured against loss by FDIC insurance just as if you held your money with a bank or local credit union. The difference is you get a much higher interest rate. To learn more about Laurel Road and their high yield savings account, make sure to check out the link down in the description below. Thank you to Laurel Road for sponsoring this portion of the video. Okay, so option number five here is not a great fit for everybody, but for some people, it's not only a great way to save and offset the impact of inflation, but you can even beat inflation. And that is to utilize a combination of a high yield savings account in conjunction with selling conservative cash secured puts. This is actually what I'm doing in my own road trip savings account for our 2024 road trip as a family. With some brokerages, including Fidelity, you have the ability to hold cash 
and at the same time write cash secured puts, which collect option premium. And at the same time, even though you have an active put option in place and are collecting option premium, you are also collecting interest on that cash. As you can see right here, the Fidelity Government Money Market Account, SPAXX, you can see the seven day yield is 4.99%. That is much better than a traditional bank account. And you'll see here, I've got an active cash secured put in place right now with IWM or the Russell 2000 index. Here's a look at the past 60 days of income in the account and transactions. You'll notice here that right here, the dividend received on September 29th was $83.06, which is a fair amount of interest considering I've only got $20,000 invested in this account. And in addition to that, I'm also collecting income all along the way. Here's a look at all the transactions for the past 90 days, which does not include the the period of October 2023, which I'm going to receive a dividend today in the amount close to $83, $84, $85. In fact, let me just assume that here. I'm going to just insert in here an amount. I'll be conservative. I'll say $83 here for the uh, October dividend. What this tells you in just 90 days, based on $20,000 held in this account, I've collected $394.36 right here. So $394.36 divided by 20,622 equals a yield of 1.91% in just three months. You take 1.91% divided by three, and then multiplied by 12, that's equal to a 7.64% yield on your money. And this is a pretty conservative strategy. So if you're looking for ways to increase the amount of money you have above and beyond just the high yield savings and interest rates available, you can operate this strategy. But again, not for everybody, right? We can just sit our money in a high yield savings account and earn 5%. Now, the downside of this strategy is when you utilize cash secured puts, you may find yourselves in situations where you get assigned on the shares you're writing cash secured puts and you might end up holding an investment you didn't plan on doing. So there is some risk here, no doubt, but you are compensated for that risk with option premium. Something to be aware of before you implement this strategy. If you wanna learn more about selling cash secured puts in your portfolio, check out the link for a different YouTube video down in the description below. Hopefully you found some value in this video, guys. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to all comments left on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.